So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. something to say to me? Do you? Like I'm not supposed to leave the room? Is that what you're telling me? You're telling me I'm not supposed to leave the room? Is that what you're trying to say? Hi and welcome to Cockatoo, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 87. Handicapped and injured birds. How to deal with them. Well we've certainly had our share of handicapped and or injured birds, so and if you're going to have a bird in your home, eventually you're going to deal with injury. First, a little housekeeping. Our next episode will be on mating behavior, how to deal with it, and how to prevent as much as you can of it. Well, it's kind of important to do that. I'd also like to thank Jimbo's Naturally for their recent uh, donation to us. And for all those who are patrons, you have my... You have our greatest appreciation. The nice thing about you patrons, even if you only give us a dollar an episode, two dollars a month, we know that little income is coming in. You, know, you can change it. You can give us more or less. Or Right, Lucy? She said, oh, I haven't introduced everybody? Okay. This is Lucy, also called Lucy Lou, or I love Lucy. And then we have the peach, peaches. Peachy girl. Pippa. Pip, 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 she loves to hear her name, don't you, Pip? And we have Coco, Coco T-Bird, Hello, Coco. Lorelai, wake up. You're supposed to help, not sleep, okay? And then Mander the Mander the Great Salamander Bird. We have Salamander back there in the back. He was quite vocal. I'm not even sure he's in the picture now. He's sitting so far off to the side. Uh, let me check that camera, because I'm not sure I got that camera angle right to catch him. No, he's in there. Yep, he's in there. Okay. 
and Sugarbird. Well, Sugarbird, they've all been out in the aviary hanging out. So, so as far as handicap, let's start with handicap before we do injured. Um, I recommend that you watch a movie from about an hour long. I think it is an hour long. It was made in 1933 by Ted Browning. Uh, and after he made this movie, he basically got drummed out of the movie industry, which is sad. Um, it's called Freaks, and you can find it online. If you just look up Freaks, you can find it. There's a couple of places where you can watch it for free. Um, it's a great movie if you're dealing with handicapped animals. Now, I'm not PC, okay? It drives me nuts when people use PC. Uh, when they're so careful with their speech, they're afraid they're going to step on anybody. Uh, I like the word handicapped. Um, I'm handicapped. I ran into a truck when I was seven years old. I injured this side of my brain. And uh, so I can't remember what I did yesterday. But, you know, you lose one thing, you gain another. I can remember what an endoplasmic reticulum is from 10th grade. So. The only reason I know that was 10th grade is because that was the last grade I did before I took my GED, so. So anyway, I use the term handicapped, but if you watch this movie, it's fantastic. What he did was, it's a circus movie, right? He went around and he got all these different circus freaks. You know, there's one guy who has no legs. He walks around on his hands. Um... There's another, there's, a, there's two ladies in there that don't have arms. You should see them smoking cigarettes with their feet. It's pretty amazing. Um, there's one gentleman who lived to be 68 years old, too. Um, no arms, no legs. He was called the torso. There's the bird lady, and there's the human skeleton. There's, but these are all real people that were doing real jobs. And what's sad is that people came in and said, oh, this is wrong, that these, these people are being, they're being exploited in these circuses. So they basically gave them money and they gave them a place to live. Oh, wonderful. They had jobs. They were enjoying their lives. They had uh, work they could do, which, you know, it, they, they actually had a place in society. And, you know, and they weren't being exploited, okay? These were... As we, would, as we would say today, and I hate the phrase, they were differently abled. You know, they, it was just amazing to see how these people overcame their handicaps. And the reason I suggest you watch this is because it'll give you the idea that if you have a bird, for example, there is a bird I read about online, because I do research for these videos, obviously, uh, to see what other people are saying. There was <clears throat> one place where they were talking about a bird that had no legs. So here's a bird that can't walk, right? And obviously it wouldn't be flying because it would have not be able to land properly. So they put, you know, put towels down for it, and then it would tell them when it wanted to be moved from place to place, and it, they got a language between each other. And, and so they would pick it up and move it to wherever it wanted to be, and it wanted to be with them, and, you know, and it had, this is a bird that was having a good life, even though it couldn't walk. Um, we had one with us that was uh, Sam. He was a uh, African Congo African Gray, and he had one foot that stuck out like this. Okay. So what you have to do, and we can talk about specifics, but in general, you just have to think. And if you watch that movie, it'll help you do it. You have to think. Now, what what are we going to do to make it easier for this bird? Well mainly wherever the perch is, he has to be able to reach the cage. So he has one foot down and the other one can reach some part of the cage you can hold on. If you think about it, you don't need somebody to tell you what to do. If you think about it, obviously if he's got one foot sticking out like this, he needs to be on a perch that's, that's at the right angle and close enough to the actual side of the cage that he can grab the cage. And that way he can stabilize himself. Um, I also read about online, I read about a bird that's blind, okay, we have one, it's not here, uh, Touche, um, rescued by us and is now living with the, uh, with two of the directors of the, the Chloe Sanctuary, 
And blind in one eye has about 80% roughly vision in the other eye. And um, it took a little working. You know, you have to you have to approach from the side where Touche can see. And uh, you know, it, it it you learn to adjust to the bird, and the birds since its visions can only see uh, one side and then can only see partially, you have to be careful in your approach, approach slowly and you know, they, they worked it all out and you know, Touche just has a great life. Um, when I say a great life is that when they come home from work, Touche comes you know, out of the cage, goes right over, wants to be petted, wants to be, you know, get its, its dinner and everything. And, uh, so, just because a bird has a problem, for example, here's our peaches. She has six fused vertebrae in her neck. She can't preen her own tail section, so of course she's made it to me. Um, that had to be, because, well, even with my preening her, she's already had two uh, impacted follicles, which had to be surgically dealt with. So, uh, you've got to make sure that you're preening her tail end a lot, you'll see me do it. I'm doing it right now because I'm thinking about it. If she gets some of these feathers impacted, and what happens, and I can't show you right here, maybe I can take a close up, but she gets feathers in and they're just little pointy stickers, okay? And when they're like that, if they don't get opened up, they don't move around enough. Um, sometimes those follicles underneath will get irritated and inflamed. And then they'll get to be an infection under the skin. So, uh, whereas you normally don't want to pet a bird or preen below its neck uh, with peaches, that's something you have to do. The southeastern red-tailed black cockatoo is vanishing in the wild, but there may be a chance that we can save it. There's a woman working, and I know I'm going to destroy her name, Daniela Ticera. That's T-E-I-X-E-I-R-A. I'm sure I just totally mangled that. But she's studying these wonderful cockies for her PhD at the University of Queensland. And she's actually using sound to locate them. They are particularly noisy and usually heard long before they're seen. So she is making recordings to try to fully understand the habitat that these wonderful cockatoos live in. Unfortunately, their habitat is being destroyed. There's a particular tree, the bloke, is mostly cleared in the wild. These birds are extremely picky about what they eat. So, understanding them better is the key to saving them in the wild. So Daniela is studying them to understand what's affecting the population, making the population drop. Other trees that they frequent are the ancient paddock trees, which are also disappearing in the wild. And these are generally where they nest. So without nests and without the stringy bark and the particular food that they are known to eat, they're not going to be with us much longer. Fortunately, Daniela is studying them. She's putting out recorders and using these to categorize the different kind of communications these birds are using actually helps her to determine flock size and by the sounds whether the babies are being fed enough as the babies by the duration of time that these babies are asking for food 
she can determine whether or not they're actually being fed properly if they're finding enough food. So she's got over 150 gigabytes for each one of these recorders she has in the field. And if you would like to know more, there is an article at abcnet.au. If you look up the southeastern red-tailed black cockatoo, you'll see the article. Or you can check our show notes and see how she's working to save these wonderful birds in the wild. So there are certain basic rules about how you work with birds that may change, yeah, Pippa, that may change based on what their problem is. You know, she, she also has a little arthritis in her spine. Now the way their spines are built, they only have two small little sections where there's a tiny bit of movement. I and mean, we're talking a tiny bit of movement. Basically, once you get past the neck, it's all fused with two little places where there's a slight bit of movement. Those two places have arthritis too. So here's a bird. Peach, are you a bird? You're getting a little too excited because I'm petting you. This is a problem lately. She's been getting too excited while I pet her and I still have to preen her, so it's just what you got to do. But um, now here's a bird who's happy. She's happy, she's vocal, she gets involved, she plays. Um, she can't lift her head very much. And again, if you're looking at limited motion, you have to think. She can't lift her head much, so she doesn't want to have food bowls that are really high up in the air. So her food bowls have to be low. She can get up into a cage, high in the cage. She can climb up there, but you have to make sure that all the perches are really secure. You can't have anything that can possibly come loose. I have one of those, uh, one of her perches that she likes so much, I actually had to bolt it in place. It's one of those ones that you twist it has the plastic end that you twist tight. You twist tight, and it, it forks together like this, and holds it in place. Well, I actually put bolts in there so that can't come loose because if that happens, she can't stop herself from falling. So, and at night she's in a, a cage that's small enough where if she did fall, she isn't really going to hurt herself. So a lot of what you're going to do if you have a handicapped bird is think about it, right? Because you, you can look online and you can see what other people have done, and I recommend that. Um, the only thing I say when it comes to that kind of deal is that they start talking about giving them flower essence, or they're talking about any kind of alternative medicine, ignore that stuff. It can be dangerous to do that. You never know what you're giving your bird there. There's no regulation by the FDA on alternative medicine, so don't do it. Um, what you want, if you're going to do that, what you want to do is to look for information on how do you deal with a blind bird. Well, if a bird's blind, that doesn't mean it can't live a full life. Okay, it knows your voice. And if you approach it the same way every time, with, let's say, the same hand sliding it under the bird, to bring it out of the cage. Now when I say cage, you're going to want to make a cage for a blind bird. You're going to want to make it so it's low. Okay, you don't want to have anything way up in the air. Um, <clears throat> obviously you don't want a bird to be up high and then fall when it can't see where it's going. So you're going to make that cage so that the perches are down low. And you're not going to move those perches around much. Normally with birds you try to mix up their cage a little bit. You don't want to do that with a blind bird. My uh, mom and dad had a poodle, okay? And they didn't think, you know, they thought Michelle was fine. They were, you know, she was old, she was getting up there, but they thought she was fine, and they moved. Well, she, Michelle had the whole house figured out. She had every room memorized, every position of every piece of furniture, uh, because she was blind. She had gone blind. And, um, when they moved to the new place, the dog was a wreck. Um, I don't agree with them. What they did was put her down at that point. I think they could have worked through it, but that wasn't the way my folks work. Okay, so they just saw her suffering, and 
and you know after they put her in the bathroom and then slowly taught her you know took her from to one room and taught her where everything was in that room you know they had a sense of smell so you could use that to help direct her um, but they didn't do it so so when you're dealing with a bird that's that's blind you're going to want to leave everything the same and make sure everything is nice and safe, nothing they can hurt themselves on. Um, oh, you got a little too... she's been like this. It's supposed to be the end of mating season, and there she is, vibrating again. Peaches, I have to preen you when you start vibrating. This isn't good, sweetie pie. Do not... Leave her alone for a while, it'll go away. Right, Lucy? Hey, you guys, you're supposed to be at it. You're supposed to be giving us the, uh... Yeah, you especially. You're supposed to be, like, bouncing up and down and having fun, and you're just sitting there. Pippa? Come on, you're in charge of all this. Well, at least you're fluffing. The rest of the other birds around here aren't doing much. Just sitting. They've been out in the aviary, so they're, you know, a little tired from having... Crawled all over the place, flown places, done, done whatever they wanted to do, and now they're sitting in here. But when it gets hot, I have to do these videos at the end of the day because I have to turn the air conditioner off, especially with that the new microphone setup we have. It's great, except if there's a sound. I had, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but on our last couple of episodes, the sound quality wasn't terribly good, and the reason for that was that I tried to use our automatic swing uh, device that we hook up to our camera so we have one camera that can you know, spin the whole room. Well, the motor makes a little tiny sound. Well, it's not a little tiny sound of that thing. It picks up every grind of that thing going from side to side. And it's loud. So, um, I suppose eventually I'll figure out how to adjust this so that I can do that. but. Right now, I'll have to use that camera else, elsewhere or use it on remote just to move it around and in particular circumstances. So, the first thing you want to do when you have a bird that's handicapped is think outside the box. If you have to, watch that movie Freaks before you start dealing with the situation so that you realize that there can be people or birds that can live full lives even though they don't have legs or they don't have arms or they don't have either one in the case of uh, the man they call the torso. We have a tendency, as my parents did, to think, well, this is just a really sad situation and maybe we should put the bird down. No, don't think that way. Um, because There may be some birds that that may have to happen because they're that bad off, but uh, in most cases, if you have a bird that has an issue, you know, it has a missing missing limb or, you know, a visual problem or you know, any kind of an issue, you can deal with it, so. And it can be just as happy. This one down here is way too happy right now. She's got six feet of vertebrae in her neck. <clears throat> she doesn't get around fast at all. She walks like a turtle. But she's happy most of the time. Right now she's a little too happy. You know what George Carlin said, Peaches? They make padded cells for people who are too happy. Now, there are some birds which are, are handicapped and you can't even see it. Like Pippa. She swallowed lead, so it's it's obviously it's affected her brain. She doesn't quite function like a normal bird but it didn't take very long working with her to work out some things so that so that she's happy and you know she's getting better at flying I'm working with her on her flight she was just flying into old Steve Jobs over there all the time but she's not doing much of that anymore are you little girl no and she, you know she makes cute sounds but she can't talk and it's probably due to the lead poisoning now, lead poisoning is one of those things people, you know, they're worried about lead being in the powder coat on the cages and stuff, but that's usually not the issue. She swallowed a fishing weight, so it had to be surgically removed. Right, girl? 
Yeah, I'm talking to you, Pippa. Tip, tip. Tip, tip, tip. <laughs> tip, 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 tip. One of the techniques that we use in applied behavior analysis is called DRI, or Differential Reinforcement of an Incompatible Behavior. Let's make it simple. Here you see several little videos of Cecil with a toy in his beak. Now, it's true he might slam me with the toy, he might whack me in the head, who knows what he might do, but one thing he's not going to do while he's holding that toy is bite. So. It's an incompatible behavior. The behavior of holding an almond in your beak, or a toy in your beak, or anything other than human flesh will stop you from biting. Now, while it's possible a bird might drop something to bite, that doesn't generally happen. So, try to remember this little incompatible thing, okay? Find something to put in their beak that they're happy with, and then you don't have to worry about the bite. Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. Kisses, Bob. Kisses. Good boy, Bobaloo. I have seen the joy in Bobaloo's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Babalu love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. Oh boy. Kisses? 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 Good boy. My heart nearly broke the day. I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse, that his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. He will need several surgeries and eventually Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. Hello, Bob. Bobaloo. Bobaloo. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. His surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Bobaloo a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. <laughs> Another bird we have that has physical problems, uh, who's handicapped, is Salamander Bird. Mander, mander, a salamander. The right side of his pelvis is twisted at a 90 degree angle. So, um, he does have a little trouble pooping. He's gotten better control over it, but he doesn't do the, the size of poop he should. So he's probably heading towards a prolapse, but it's hard to say there. Um, we'll know when we see it. Um, he has his days where he doesn't have good balance. So one of the things you do is you, when you have a bird that doesn't have good balance, and that happened with, with her in Encinitas, told me to make sure I do that with her when, when she didn't have many feathers. She couldn't, she couldn't balance herself to make sure she had sharp nails. She doesn't anymore. I, drew, I actually dull her nails now because she doesn't have any trouble. She flies. Um, 
She still hasn't got much lift, but she can fly. She can fly over to the couch if she wants to. And she does. Are you trying to eat the design on my Planetary Society shirt? Are you? You are. Why are you doing that? It's not something for you to eat. It's not. What are you doing? You gonna eat my shirt? Okay. Do whatever you gotta do, kid. So, and depending on the situation, if you have a bird, we had a bird that had a missing wing. Okay, so there's an imbalance. They, they're going to have a balance problem. When you are missing a wing, then you're going to have trouble getting around and have a tendency to fall. So again, you want to have them low. Keep them low. Uh, give them something they can grab onto with their beak. You'll see that if you're driving around with a bird in your vehicle, in a small cage, in the passenger seat, you'll notice that when you go to make a turn, if they see the turn coming, <laughs> it's funny, you want to have them where they can see, so they can learn the turns. When they see a turn coming, they know you're going to make that turn, they'll grab a hold of the, the, the cage and hold on when you make the turn. Not dumb animals. Nope. Now, Coco is handicapped. Um, in that she had her, and we're, we're pretty certain of this, there's no way to prove it out, but she can't eat solids. So uh, she was probably given food that was too hot by syringe, because these breeders want to make money and they're not concerned about the birds, so they shove food down their throat instead of feeding them normally. That should be illegal, but... So she has to have mash given to her in a syringe every morning. You know, you just squeeze it into her beak with a little peanut butter on the outside. She won't eat it otherwise. Part of that was that the breeders told her parents that uh, the only thing she would eat and the only thing she needed to eat was oatmeal, peanut butter, and bananas mixed together. So for the first five of years of her life, that's all she got. She wouldn't eat anything. She'll eat some soft foods. She will eat papaya. She'll eat pine nuts. Um, obviously, she can bust open a pine nut, no problem. And it's soft inside, so she can, she can eat soft foods. So if you have a bird that's challenged that way, then you want to find an alternative. Um, so the syringe worked. Uh, and I just take the mash that I make for everybody else and I blend it up and then she gets it via syringe and Lorelei up there she, she wants to get some too so she'll eat some of the syringe food and then she goes into her cage and eats the regular stuff too but I did catch cocoa I make muffins and they're soft soft muffins even though what I used to make them you wouldn't think they'd turn out soft but they do she will, she can eat those, and she will. Um, won't you, Coco? Won't you, Coco? Coco bird. Coco bird. Coco bird. And Pippa. I see your Pip. I see the Pip. Uh -oh. No, come on over, Pip. Come on, Pip, Pip. Oh, hi, baby. Oh, be nice. That's only the Pippa. It's the Pippa. It's the Pippa. It is. It's an interesting sound you're making there, kid. Sounds like you got a motor in there. No, in that microphone, it's going to pick that up, too. Yeah. 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 So with this one, she has a little territorial aggression, and I'm fairly sure that's because she's a little tweaked in her head. 
but she's a cute girl and we love her. Yes, we do. We love the Pippa. We love the Pippa, don't we? Yes, we do. We just have to make sure she doesn't attack anybody else because she has a tendency to do that. Not to hurt them, but to try to chase them away. So with her, because she's, she's handicapped mentally, and it does cause some other physical problems, like she'll, when she goes to step up, it's hard to get her both feet off of a perch. Once in a while, she'll come off the perch, but most of the time, you have to gently pry her feet off. And uh, I'm, she'll now give me one foot almost every time. Getting the other one off is it's still a, a work in progress, but she's getting there. Aren't you, girl? Hmm? So, she didn't show any interest in toys, and it's taken a lot of work to find a toy she likes. Um, at the moment, I'm still having, she doesn't like the toys I make, so I have to buy toys for her. Um, but you just have to keep trying until you find something that they'll play with. And she, she's starting to play with a couple of the foot toys that I buy. And you have to keep working with that because they'll develop other problems if they're not, you know, playing. You need them to use their minds. Whatever's left of them, right, baby? Well, we both have mental problems, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You sure are a good girl, though. And you, too. And this one came here with a deformed beak. And give it another year, it should be completely normal. Right now, it's usable, isn't it? Isn't it, girl? What she had was, and so you have a bird that's handicapped. Sometimes it's not a permanent condition, something you can fix. She had, her lower mandible was about a half an inch too long. Okay? So she, her beak was always open. She couldn't close her beak. And even after I, we got that cut down, Dr. Young cut it down initially. And when I say cut, I mean we anesthetized her. I was there helping. And you got her asleep. And they put a mask over her face. Right? So they take the mask off. And then he took and he literally cut a good quarter inch, a little more than a quarter inch, off the bottom. And then he dremeled it. Okay. He also worked on the top because that this upper came down to the base of the lower part of her beak. You know where that hole is under here? Came almost to there. So I still have to work on that about once a week because I've got to get it so it points again. They dulled it out. They kept flattening it out. I'm sure that's what they were doing at the place she came from. So eventually she just had a flat beak. Well, it's really hard to spear anything with a flat beak. You do need a point on the end of your beak. So she does have a point right now. It's getting, maybe in another month, I'll have that down to where it's a nice, good point where she can stick me with it if she wants to. She pretends she wants to do that sometimes. Right? She also had an eye infection and three different visits to vets. Uh, finally had to take her to the eye care center for animals to see Dr. Meredith. And he gave us uh, something that actually has worked. Now she can, she, her eye doesn't look all irritated anymore. I have to check it all the time, though, to make sure it isn't turning red. If it starts to do that, I have to put her on that medicine for a few days. But it looks good. Now, for handicapped birds like peaches, this is a great find. This little baby is a baby Einstein piano. Now, it has a soft keyboard, so you have to be careful. You know, a bird could tear that up, so you have to deal with this would be. So this would be something that you you would use only supervised. Now, peaches has one. It's a doggy piano. The doggy piano has hard keys, and we can leave that in her cage because she won't tear that up. But this, she might. It's pretty cool, though. 
English numbers one. three settings, but the middle setting is what Peaches likes. And this is a baby Einstein. Okay. So, something to consider. Just remember, these are soft and their beaks are sharp. So, if she really wanted to, she could tear this up. I only use this when she's right around me. We just had this about a week and she loves it. So, as with Coco, she has, you know, the inability to eat hard food, okay? She won't eat pellets. She can't, really. Uh, dry food just doesn't work because her esophagus is permanently damaged. So, finding things that she would eat, she loves peanut butter. Now, that's something, too. She loves peanut butter. Mm. And you'd think, well, when I go to the store, I'll buy that nice, organic, natural peanut butter. Uh, be careful. Because some of these natural peanut butters, all they really do is grind the peanuts up, and don't add anything to them, and uh, try what you should do if you buy peanut butter. I use Skippy, and I'll explain why. But if you buy peanut butter, what you need to do is take a teaspoon of it, put it in your mouth, like that, and swallow. And if it feels like it's stuck sticking in your throat, or you feel gumminess in your throat, you don't want to give it to your birds. I learned this the hard way with Coco, okay? I had to take syringes and water and give it to her to clear her throat. Because the natural peanut butter, even though there's no added salt, there's no added oil or whatever, can choke them. And um, so the idea of giving a bird something you think is better, that could possibly kill them, isn't a good idea. So they get Skippy now, which, you know, it's got a little added sugar, it's got a added oil and that kind of thing. But they're not going to choke on it. And there are some birds that in order to get them to take their medicine, I have to mix it with uh, the Haldol with the peanut butter. Otherwise they won't take it. That doesn't mean they couldn't. I mean, it's possible I could work them into taking it directly from a syringe. But um, you have to deal with the psychological issues there too. If you're doing that and the bird's becoming stressed, uh, they may not trust you after you've grabbed them by the beak and forced it open, which I know how to do, but I try not to ever do that. I once in a while have to do it with Snowball because he won't take his medicine mixed in with his peanut butter, and so I've got to pry his beak. And basically, you get your, your thumb underneath and the other finger above, and then you're going to pry like this with your thumb down like that. Well. Because their beaks move side to side as well as up and down. Don't try that with a parrot. Just, you know, a, an old, uh, a macaw or a, a, an Amazon or something. Only with cockatoos because the way their jaws are constructed, they move back and forth like that. They're calyptor uh beaks. So, um, And then you can put the syringe in there and squirt it in. But the peanut butter is a good delivery system. And I know a lot of people are like, well, it can have aflatoxins, and it, well, it's true. So it could corn, so it could any grain. There's a ton of different things you can get aflatoxin from. So just blaming it on peanut butter and not going to make it. And if you look it up on the Wikipedia, you'll see that's the case. Okay. So you have to worry about with, with any kind of bird that's handicapped, you have to deal with whatever the issue is. Like with her, it's feeding. Okay, getting the food into her. So you have to think about it. What does she need? So she gets the mash, which has pellets mixed into it, okay, but it's soft. She gets that run through a blender, and then she gets that delivered to her beak in a syringe. I get a 60 milliliter syringe for these bigger birds. So she'll go through about 40, 30 or 40 milliliters of that in the morning. And then she'll, you know, she hits her pine nuts and her uh, papaya during the day. Then I have to watch her poop, because sometimes she'll try to 
you know, not eat very much of the, the, uh, the liquid mash, and she'll try to eat nothing but papaya, and then her poop turns pink, and that's not good, because that means she's not getting the nutrition she needs. So in her case, her major, her major issue once we got the feather destructive behavior done was to get her to be able to eat, and in her case, it's the syringe. And I've tried other things. I've tried presenting her with, with blended mash with a little peanut butter on top. It doesn't work. She just, she wants the syringe and that's what she's going to get. So, hi Peach. Hey Peaches. Oh, you wiggled your tail. That's not a good sign. Not a good sign. Means you're ready to get all vibrated right again. Don't turn into a washing machine, little girl. Mm hmm I know what you're saying. Yeah. Presenting. I knew that was coming. Yeah. You're presenting for me, sweetheart. I love you, too. You know I love the peach. So, again, if you have a bird that has an issue like she does, she can't, which is reduced mobility, um, you just have to think of how you can make their life more interesting. Give them as much play area down below as possible. Uh, don't. In her case, she does pretty good sitting on top on a perch. She knows once she gets on a on a perch, she knows how to hold, hand hold on the things. She so makes sure that the perch gives her places where she can grab onto her beak. I say hand hold. She uses her beak to hold on to things so she doesn't fall. And when you're putting them in a cage, if you've got a bird like her that's, that has limited mobility, you want to make sure that they get both feet down and a beak on the side of the cage, if they're on a perch up above, before you let go. Okay. So with her I do that. She basically lets me know when she's, when she's secure by putting her beak over onto the side of the cage to hold on. And then she's okay. Work with your bird. Look at their eyes. Look at how they're responding to things. And they may not always respond positively in the beginning, but you just keep trying. Um, and don't be, you know, be persistent, but not pushy. Pushy doesn't seem to work too well with these guys. Does it? So there's no rule of thumb. You know, you've got a bird with no legs or you can't move around at all. You put them onto a, a towel, okay? Um, you present toys and things for them to play with. You can have some hanging toys right around the bird. You can have some foot toys around them. Now I say foot toys, but in this case they're beak toys, right? They're just going to, little things they can chew on with their beak. They're still going to want to chew. So get them involved in chewing. Um, if you've got a bird that now we're talking about you know a bird that has no legs here so this bird has got to be moved from place to place you can't just leave it in one place so it's going to get bored so when you come home you need to take it out you know put have different towels around the place you know the birds used to different towels you can take it from towel to towel around where you're sitting by the couch if you're a couch potato that watches movies or tv or if you work in the back room, you take the bird back there with you in a little box with that it you know, so it can't fall out. Something that has sides and little things for it to play with, right? You're going to have to do a little more cleaning with a bird like that because obviously they, they can't get up to poop. So you're going to have to watch to make sure that you know they don't just they're not sitting in their own poop. Right, Peach? You got another song? You have another verse to that song, baby girl? What? You want to go on this side? Okay. But then I got to move this. this. This has got my notes on it. And that's actually Romans. He's letting me use it. That's where he watches his movies. And actually, that thing has never been used for anything else. But today I'm going to use it for my notes. Some birds have scissor beak, which we believe that happens when they don't get the right nutrition when they're young. And whoever the breeder is that's raising the bird is feeding them from the same side all the time. So what happens is that 
syringe just pushes the beak to one side or the other and then what happens is their beak goes off like this um, in some cases that can be fixed um, in some cases not what I mean by not is that you may have to take the bird down to the vet every couple of months and have their beak trimmed. But the main thing to do is keep your eyes open, do a little research online, look up blind parrot, you know, or parrot no legs, or handicapped parrot, and then read and see if you can find something that's similar to your bird, or contact us, and we'll try to help. Um, very good, Pippa. Very good girl. And watching that movie will help you. Trust me. It'll inspire you to, to see that you can make their lives better. So, who wants to say goodbye? That's it. I wanted to get along to the issue of uh, injured birds, but we'll have to deal with that in another. We stuck pretty much with the handicapped birds. You want to say goodbye, everybody? Pippa? Say goodbye to the people. We'll see you next time, folks. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. The science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the aura of a flower.